Uh, this is a video of my home-built vacuum forming rig. I've been meaning to make a video of this for a while. It works pretty well and I wanted to share it with everybody because it was really easy to build and um, a lot of you out there who are interested in vacuum forming could build one of these in an afternoon and be up and running vacuum forming. Um, I need to make a lot of these uh, hexagonals pieces, duplicates of these in plastic. So I'm going to be vacuum forming some of these today. Um, and here's my rig right here. Basically it's just a, a shadow box that I got from um, Michael's Crafts. It's one foot by one foot square. And I screwed some pegboard on top of it full of holes. And I doubled the number of holes in the pegboard because they were pretty far apart and I wasn't getting good suction between the holes. So basically I drilled new holes between every every set of holes on there. So basically doubled the number of holes. And uh, drilled holes inside for vacuum cleaners. Now I started out with just one shop vac. And uh, that worked pretty well when I was uh, molding rounded stuff with uh, nice smooth sides. But when I started working on these um, on these hexagons with their sharp corners and right angles at the base, the back the, the plastic just wasn't sucking down all that well around them. I was getting you know pretty wide radii instead of sharp corners. So I added a second uh, a second shop back, and that seems to give me plenty of suction and everything sucks down pretty well now. Um, I'm using 30 mil polystyrene plastic which I buy in a big sheet, 4x8 sheet from a plastic supply company. $15 so that's pretty cheap for 4x8 sheet of these. You know you can get uh, what 32 of them out of that so for 15 bucks so that's pretty good. And it's in this frame that I built. The frame is just made out of um, one by twos screwed together um, and that's added some uh, angle brackets at the corners just to reinforce it and on top is just a, a cut out uh, sort of do hinged door made out of plywood to hold the uh, plastic inside sort of like a drum skin and uh, there's three screws here that uh, hold the hold the door down and they go right through the plastic to hold it in place and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the oven this side up under the broiler and let the plastic heat up and it's going to sag down sag down and soften up and then I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to with the vacuums running and uh, the things I want to mold sitting on top of the, the the pegboard there I'm going to place this right down on top of here uh, the soft uh, saggy plastic is going to get sucked down by the vacuum and form itself around anything sitting on that uh, on, the, on top of that pegboard and it's going to make a pretty good reproduction of it. Um, one thing I did was I added some uh, felt around the corners of the of the pegboard just to help form a uh, semi airtight seal. I was getting some air leakage around the, the base of the frame that was preventing things from sucking down pretty good so with the with the felt on there that that seems to help a lot so I'm gonna get everything set up and ready to go put the camera on a tripod and uh, try and get some uh, video of uh, everything in action and uh, I'm all by myself so I hope this works out um, see how well it goes uh, I've been having pretty good luck with this so hopefully I get some good shots of it in action um, so I'm going to get to put it on a tripod and uh, off we go. Okay, the plastic's in the oven. So things are going to happen pretty fast here. I'm not going to have any time to narrate. You won't be able to hear me over the vacuum cleaners running anyway. But, uh, okay, there are my three mold pins sitting on top of the pegboard. The frame is in the oven. The plastic is starting to heat up. It's starting to sag. How much I let it sag, let's trial and error to get the right amount and uh, it's starting to sag down it's getting hard it's hard to see but maybe I can get a quick shot before it sags too much and I have to uh, I have to run and turn things on let me see here ah there see it sagging I gotta go things are gonna move fast from here on out
pretty well. As you can see, the plastic sucked down over the mold pins really nicely. Um, made a pretty good, uh, a pretty good copy of them all. Now, I do have some some webbing here between them, wrinkles basically. I've tried some experiments to try and get rid of that, but haven't had too much luck. It's really not causing me much of a problem though, because I'm going to be filling these cavities with plaster to make. Um, plaster versions of the wooden mold pins and the plaster sands really easily and these webbings make just make little creases in the, the plaster copies so that that sands out really easily and quickly so I haven't tried too hard to get rid of the uh, the little webbing and wrinkles in it um, it's not really causing me too much of a problem so anyway let me turn it over and show you here's the back there's the the bottoms of the mold pins embedded in the uh, in the plastic um, I drilled little holes in the center of each mold pin so I can uh, screw a screw in there and then I'll have something to pull the uh, pull the mold pins out of the plastic with because as the plastic shrunk down around it they're held in there pretty tight from friction but I did spray each of the mold pins with a Teflon mold release compound first so um, they will come out fairly easily it's just there's nothing to grip them with because the plastic has sucked down around them so perfectly so, um, but once I screw a screw in, I can pull them right out. Right, I'll steal one of these screws here out of the frame. This one here. And I should be able to just pull it right out like that. So that worked pretty well. So I'll do the other three, pull them out, and give you a view of what it looks like then. Okay, there's all three mold pins out of the plastic, and you can see the cavities that are left behind. Now, the, the webbing on the other side I was talking about just leaves little creases in the sides there that you can see. Uh, again, not too much of a problem for my application. Um, if you were trying to mold something that needed really faithful reproduction, uh, you might want to um, experiment a little more, maybe different thicknesses of plastic. Maybe I'm letting it sag a little too much, and that's where the extra plastic for the wrinkles is coming from I'm not sure but um, this is working good enough for my application so I pretty much am not worried about it if I take the other two screws out of the frame you'll be able to see how it, it comes apart so that opens up and here's the uh, three molds I just made so I throw that on the pile. I've made quite a few and I need to keep at it basically until I run out of plastic because I need to make a lot of these hexagons. And I just slide in another piece of plastic, close the uh, frame, put the uh, three screws back in. Again, they just push right through the, uh, the thin plastic and tighten them down. Uh, pop the frame back in the oven and I'll mold myself uh, three more of these mold pins. So it's really quick and easy, and uh, this whole setup cost almost nothing. I mean, uh, the shadow box, I forget what I paid for it, but it was the most expensive piece over at Michael's Crafts, um, which is, you know, the, that's the base of the unit right here. A uh, piece of pegboard off my junk pile, free. The felt was free. I think I even had the angle brackets on the frame here. I think I had those in my junk pile. I had some uh, one by twos laying around. Uh, this is just a scrap piece of plywood, quarter inch plywood that I cut out to form the top. I had some old brass hinges in a box, not doing anything. So it all came together. Shot backs, already had them. So didn't really cost me anything. And I'm up and running uh, um, vacuum forming uh, for basically no expense. And very quickly, I mean, it took me an afternoon to build this, literally an afternoon. Not even the whole afternoon, a couple of hours. So if you're interested in doing some vacuum forming, it's really easy. All you need is some scrap wood, you know, a shop vac or two, and an oven, and you're up and running. Oh, and um, when you're done, make sure you turn off the oven. That's a mistake I've made. So anyway, thanks for watching, and happy vacuum forming.